I've spoken many times before about the things that I feel like only anime does, or in some cases, does better than other mediums. And one of those things is the extreme diversity in the writer's imagination. In anime, you can take childhood fantasies, things you may have done while playing on the playground or under your impenetrable fortress of pillows, and then bring those fantasies into whatever setting you choose, which kind of gives it this childlike sense to it that allows others to suspend their disbelief and enjoy the fantasy with you. Today's show is all about childhood fantasies, adventures with time travelers, aliens from other worlds, and mystical espers with powers beyond measure. It's also about a girl whose childlike fantasies fill the world and make it possible for everything to exist. Ladies, gentlemen, and others, my name is Arcata, and welcome to Glass Reflection. Today, from 2006, Kyoto Animation's The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. Let's jam. Over time, as we live our lives, some people grow up. Sometimes they have childhood fantasies that are whisked away in an instant and replaced by boring everyday reality. That is something that seems to be the case with Kion, a high schooler from Japan who, as far as anyone including himself can tell, is a perfectly ordinary student. With the exception of the fact that he doesn't actually have a real name, as everyone including his sister only refers to him as Kion. A nickname. But besides that, the only really interesting thing that happens in Kion's life is that he meets Haruhi Suzumiya. I'm Haruhi Suzumiya from East Junior High. First off, I'm not interested in ordinary people, but if any of you are aliens, time travelers, or espers, please come see me. That is all. Is that supposed to be funny? Haruhi is obviously not your typical average girl. Most of her peers view her as needlessly eccentric, and while they never question her intelligence or athletic ability, it's her bizarre attitude towards life and the world around her that makes people shy away. Well, except for one person. Hey, that stuff you were saying when you were introducing yourself, were you serious about all that? What about the stuff I was saying? Well, you know, about aliens and stuff. Why, are you an alien or something? Well, no, but I just... Well, uh... no, but you just what? Well, I just forget it. Be it simple curiosity or perhaps stupidity, our hero Kion ends up becoming the only human being who can stand Hadahi's abnormal personality, much to his later dismay. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Because you see, Hadahi is immensely susceptible to this little thing called boredom. While she has visited every after-school club that is available, she never found any interest in any of them, mainly because they're way too reserved for her tastes. This leads her, after Kion's offhand suggestion, to create her own club. It is called the Spreading Excitement All Over the World with Suzumiya Harahi Brigade, or SOS Brigade for short. Their purpose? Well, that's rather vague beyond what you might be able to gather from the title. Ultimately, it is believed that the Brigade's purpose is to seek out and find things in the world that would make life more interesting and less boring, like aliens, time travelers, and espers. Little does Haruhi know, however, just how close those interesting and supernatural beings are. So because the series ends up establishing that not only is Haruhi the most bizarre girl in the world, but also the unknowing creator and god of the entire universe. By the way, the show does establish that Haruhi is in fact the unknowing god and creator of the entire universe. I just forgot to mention that. But because of this, things change according to her wishes. Case in point, let's fill the entire SOS Brigade with the exact kind of people that Haruhi is trying to find, while also filling out some check marks on the stereotypical anime character sheet. You have Mikuru, the time traveler from the future slash cute moe blob large breasted fan service girl complete with an entire wardrobe of cosplay costumes lovingly donated by Haruhi herself. You have Itsuki, the esper slash mysterious transfer student slash cute bushy male character who is more or less the biggest passive aggressive dick in the entire series. There's also Yuki Nagato, the Rei Ainami clone slash cyborg alien who acts as a tertiary adjunct to the Unimatrix or 
something, but is also super intelligent, super powerful, and, well, super badass. Lastly, there's Kion, and yeah, he's actually pretty normal. Unless, of course, you want to get into the massive amounts of fan theories that believe that Kion himself is the god of the universe who created Hadi to relieve his boredom, and you know, many people have gone that route, but Kion's only real power that we are shown is his massive snark. The series gives him full reign on narration for the series, which he provides with the same jaded, unmotivated, sarcastic tone that makes him such a relatable character. Now, all of these characters have a mission, and while they have different ways of going about it, their one common goal is that Haruhi must never realize that she is, in fact, God. It is believed that should she realize she is God, she might, on a whim, decide to reboot the entire universe, completely obliterating everybody that currently exists. So they keep her in the dark, but also keep her happy. Which, with Haruhi's bizarre tastes in entertainment, lead to some very interesting storylines. Another one of the show's great points is how it uses its characters and its existing story to set up plot lines that subvert common anime stories, showing exactly how these scenarios would play out in a more realistic setting. From Mikuru getting sexually objectified with almost every otaku fetish possible to Japan's love for the Miracle Baseball team, it takes these cliches and presents them in a refreshing manner, rather than attempting to beat you over the head with the same tired tropes over and over. It makes things interesting, but not as interesting as this next bit. With a story and characters as bizarre as they come, the thing that throws this show over the top is how it presents itself to you. As such, similar to how the film series Kara no Kyokai was released in theaters out of order, Haruhi was released to the general public also out of order. Though technically Haruhi did this first. Anyway, what this means is that the already intricate Haruhi plot is made even more complicated by having it shown to you out of order. And while some people may just figure out the chronological order of the show before watching and then just be on their way, both methods of watching have their merits. If you watch the show in release order, you were watching it the way the creators intended. Subtle things were set up over the course of the show to make this build up to a massive conclusion, which you only know is coming because you've already seen episodes that take place after it. The downside to this, of course, is that there are scenes where the characters talk about events that you have not yet witnessed, so you have no idea what they're talking about and you kind of feel out of the loop, which is disconcerting. On the other hand, if you watch the show in chronological order, you lose that build up entirely as the climax takes place at the very beginning followed by the rest of the series and some unconnected episodes before finally you end up watching the episode titled Someday in the Rain, which is quite possibly one of the most boring episodes of any anime ever produced. If you don't believe me, well, you should probably watch it yourself as the large majority of the episode takes place as a still camera shot in the Brigade Club Room and nothing is actually happening. The most entertainment you get is by hearing some people through the walls while Yuki turns a few pages in her book. And remember, if you're watching chronologically, this is the last episode, which is not really the best way to end a series. Sure, it's made better by the movie, which I will talk about later, but still, Someday in the Rain was hella boring. That said, I would still recommend to watch the show in chronological order, as that seems to be the most entertaining and less frustrating method of watching for the average viewer. The only change I would make to this order is actually moving episode 00 from its place in chronological order to the first thing you watch, because it is a wonderful introduction to the world of Hadi and really should be the first thing you witness. Now, if you're indeed looking for a different anime watching experience, I still do recommend release order. You just have to go into it knowing that things are going to make not as much sense and you have to do a lot more thinking to try and piece everything together. Originally produced back in 2006 with the second season coming out in 2009, Haruhi is sort of the benchmark for Kyoto Animation in that it shows how their animation has changed over the course of those years. Because the first season is very similar to the style of animation that they had to shows prior to that, like Full Metal Panic. While the second season shows more obvious changes implemented because of their popular shows like K-On! And that new animation style is what they have used more or less religiously since. It's very interesting to see how they came about creating a style that was uniquely their own, and how that is brought into different stories while at the same time not being completely obvious. The second season episodes are still Harhi, and it's only at specific times and certain angles that you can see their new style bleed through. Not to say that what they had before was bad at all. Hell, the first season 
is very well known for two things. In the first season episode, Live Alive, we get to see a live performance of Haruhi on stage at the school's cultural festival, a scene which is masterfully animated. And of course, the show is also quite famous for its ending song. While the majority of the show's soundtrack does fill in that void of silence, which is its solemn duty, most people will not remember it for its calming themes or its occasionally dramatic overtones that all exist within the soundtrack, but rather the song that's played at the end of every episode, along with the viral dance that spawned from it. Hair Hair Yukai would have been your average everyday ending song had it been the ending for any other show except Hari, because Hari had decided that the best way to display the ending credits was to put it side by side with a choreographed dance number by the main characters. And this move was so popular that Kyoto Animation has been bringing it back again and again and... Moving on, let's talk about the dub, which does a lot of things right. While there are some things about it that nag me, and sometimes more than a little, when it does things right, it really hits it out of the park. And there is no better example of this than the casting of Crispin Freeman as Kion. Now, if you want to call me biased because of my usual fan-crazed attitude towards the most badass freaking overlord of the cosmos, then go ahead. But when you have a series like Harihi that is just filled with narration by one character, you damn well better get that one character right. And Crispin nails Kion perfectly. Like, as good as his co-stars are, and they are really good, if they casted anyone else in the role of Kion, I would probably be recommending to you right now to watch the show and sub. As such, no. Dub all the way. Hari is one of those shows that I honestly can't believe it's taken me this long to get around to reviewing. It's a landmark series in anime history that really needs to be experienced to be appreciated. Like, I'm not gonna sit here and call it the greatest anime ever. It has its flaws like anything else. What those flaws are, well... That's classified. Oh, God damn it! But what I would say is that Hari is a prime example of what anime is. It could be wild, crazy, and weird, but at the same time, have this sort of sophistication to it. And it's that sophistication that allows it to blend in with a more intellectual crowd of people. You know, the kind of people that argue over the ending of Evangelion, the symbolic meanings of Hibane Renmei, or the people who argue that worshipping Madoka as a god is just as valid as worshipping Jesus. So, with everything in mind, I have meticulously calculated values for the categories of story, characters, animation, sound, and my own personal enjoyment, which after locking it into a time loop for hundreds of thousands of years before it decides to do some bullshit homework, has me awarding the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya with an overall score of 8.98 out of 10, and rating the show Certified Frosty, a rating only for the best of the best and shows too important to ignore. Harihi is a sublime experience that should really be on the to-watch list for anyone that considers themselves to be an anime fan, but have somehow gone through their existence without watching it yet. At the time of this video, Harihi has been licensed and is available from Bandai Entertainment, or at least it should be, though Bandai has been going through a bit of a reconstruction as of late. The show is also available for legal streaming in sub only over on Crunchyroll if you happen to have access to that website. And if you click on the link in the description, glassreflection.net slash Crunchyroll, you can get a free trial of Crunchyroll's premium services and all the anime awesomeness that it contains. Though, of course, full disclosure, the premium service is not required to watch Hottie. For alternate anime recommendations, I point you towards two shows that are at the complete opposite ends of the Hottie spectrum. On one side, we have the utter out-of-bounds hilarity and comedy demonstrated in Azumanga Dao, and on the other we have the much more serious Serial Experiments Lane, though obviously that one is not for everyone. Hopefully between those you will find something to your liking. Now normally at this point I would tell you that that's it for me, and that you should please subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and also to follow me on Twitter if you feel so inclined. But I'm not really done yet. There is still one more thing worth talking about, something that has caused massive strife in the Haruhi fandom, something that quite possibly stops Haruhi from being the greatest anime that has ever been created. Next time on Glass Reflection, we have a discussion on Endless Eight. Until then, however, ladies, gentlemen, and others, stay frosty. <laughs>